It's now been almost nine months since George Janko left the Impulsive podcast. As you all probably know by now, things went south when he walked out of the Bobby Lee podcast, and it got even worse when Logan spent an entire episode criticizing him and his religion. After that, things were never the same, and it felt like George's days on Impulsive were numbered. Then, just a few months later, he disappeared from the podcast. At the time, people had a lot of questions about where he was, but there weren't many answers. Logan, Mike, and George were all very secretive about it, carrying on as if nothing had happened. But as the weeks went on, they started addressing the situation and it became clear things didn't end amicably. George would like comments on his channel shading Logan and Impulsive and make jokes on his podcast about how poorly he was treated. And Logan and Mike would make sly digs that were quite clearly about George. I obviously have been a Christian my entire life. I don't talk about it very much on this channel because I don't feel the need to always be talking about it. I love this outlet. I love this outlet and it exists because people watch. And without people watching, I, I just have a show like... A day after this episode of Impulsive was released, George made a tweet saying, To the Impulsive fans, I'm so sorry. I can't speak about things. Not my choice. I do love you guys. And for those of you sending me the clip of them talking shit, it's all love. I've already moved on from that toxic environment. People assumed that the reason George couldn't go into detail about it was because he was legally bound from doing so. And he ended up confirming this a couple months later in a podcast with Howie Mandel. They very much made it clear that I'm not allowed to speak up about things. So I, I can't even legally. Yeah. Uh, did we, we did was this a? I didn't know that you guys were in a legal. Well, he likes to tend to argue with me, and so he argues with me on the podcast and, and, and about things. And uh, I think he, I, I said, okay, then how about we discuss this? What you've guys done? Let's talk about this. And he goes, yeah, do it. And then I go, okay. And so I tweeted out. Uh, I wasn't going to talk out of respect, out of respect for the man. So, and then his attorneys hit me up and said, hey, let me remind you about the stuff you've signed. He went on to explain that the Bobby Lee episode was cut to make him look bad and that the drama that came from it ruined him. That Bobby Lee episode was edited and they made me look like I wasn't a comedian. That can't take a joke, even though every episode they make jokes on. And the reason I walked away was definitely not put in there. Did it make for a better show the way it was cut? No, that made me miserable, dude. That, that pulled me through a fucking terrible time. Do you think you can ever be friends again without doing the show? If they change their hearts, I'm not proud to call them friends. Apparently, George leaving Impulsive was his decision. Logan and Mike actually offered to take him back shortly after he left, but he said no. This says a lot because at the time, George's podcast was only just getting started. So giving up a secure position on one of the biggest podcasts on YouTube was a massive risk, particularly because he has a whole team to look after, including his sister who left her job to work with him and his girlfriend who co-hosts his podcast. But even with all that responsibility, he decided to leave Impulsive behind. This video is brought to you by MyBookie. I've been using MyBookie for my sports betting for a good while now, and I've been having an awesome experience. Their platform is simple and easy to use, so you really can't go wrong. In recent months, I bet on Tommy Fury and Logan Paul to win their fights against KSI and Dylan Dennis, as well as Tyson Fury to win his fight against Francis Ngannou. These bets came off, which I was really happy with, and my good fortune continued last week as I bet on Leon Edwards to come out on top against Colby Covington. Looking forward, I've got my eyes on UFC 297, where Sean Strickland will make his first middleweight title defense against Strickus Duplessis. And just a few weeks on from that, I'll be sure to place a bet for Tyson Fury or Alexander Usyk. My money is on DDP beating Strickland, but I haven't quite made my mind up yet on Fury Usyk. Make sure to head on over to MyBookie to place your bets. And if you follow the link in the description of this video and use the promo code TELLUSMORE, you'll be able to get up to a $200 cash bonus with your first deposit. So sign up today using the link and promo code down below. In the months following his exit from Impulsive, it started to become clear that George's podcast had legs. He'd built enough connections during his time in Logan Circle to have a steady stream of popular guests, and he was managing to attract some big names that hadn't even appeared on Impulsive. Many of his guests would ask about what happened between him, Logan, and Mike, and bit by bit, he would give away more details. On one episode with Gideon, who's also a devout Christian, George revealed that he actually tried to stop Logan from posting the podcast where he trashed Christianity. I know Logan behind closed doors. I know he has very terrible qualities, but I also know he's a very good man too. He has a good heart. He does good things. So when I saw him do this, I begged him not to post it. Not because of me. I knew I was going to be like, oh, this is great. This is going to make me look amazing. Yeah. But I knew it was going to hurt my friend's image like in a really bad way. So I begged him three times, don't post that video. Um, sometimes people got to make their own mistakes. Yeah. And maybe what he's going through now is 
his relationship with God. And I just pray that him and his future family are good and they're protected and, and they find a God instead of trying to be God. At this point, we'd heard a lot more about what happened from George's perspective than from Logan or Mike's. But in October, 2023, Mike appeared on the No Jumper podcast where he explained things from his side. Yeah. All right, so what happened with the George situation? <laughs> I gotta ask that, yeah. that's what the people wanna know. Yeah, Um, I don't wanna say he was like almost too pure for the show, mm. but like, but like he just, it, he would just get like abused by like by like certain guests, yes. and it was kind of like fucked. Cause you gotta understand. And was I, it and the I, Shaq episode or Bobby Shaq, Lee? Bobby, like all, like like you gotta understand it. And I, and I think a part of that was based on like seating and and also like the fact that he he you know me and Logan are such big personalities. So by way of him not being able to like super vocalize, he kind of he kind of like perceivably assumed the role of like the beta which he wasn't yeah. but like guests would when they would get like kind of uncomfortable or whatever what conversation they would turn and kind of pick on him this was the first time mike spoke about what happened in this much detail he went on to say some kind words about george and congratulate him on the success of his podcast george is he potentially one of the purest you know most grounded conservative uh family oriented loving people in the world like just a just a overall sweetheart by the way like kudos to him he's got his own show now it's yeah, going great it. he's had great guests on he's been able to do something more aligned with his purpose in life a couple weeks after this podcast went out mike chopped up some of the nice things he said about george and uploaded it as a clip to tiktok george saw this and posted an angry response on twitter mike could you please refrain from implying that we're friends when we're not if you're interested you're welcome to come on and discuss the truth i'm just not into the fake stuff by come on, George meant come on his podcast, and Mike responded to this on Jeff FM saying he'd be happy to, but it still hasn't happened. It's clear there's still some bad blood between them, and who knows if it'll ever get resolved. A month later, on December 7th, 2023, George dropped what almost instantly became his biggest podcast ever, the interview with Andrew Tate. He flew all the way to Romania to sit down with Andrew and the episode didn't disappoint. They spoke about everything from monogamy to religion to depression and George brought out a side of Tate we don't often see in his podcasts. I actually respect, and I, you give me a lot to think about, and without being arrogant at my echelon, it's not often I sit down with somebody and they say something that makes me think. But you've given me something to think about and I, I genuinely, I'm gonna think about it. In just a day, the podcast racked up millions of views on YouTube. And as of December 24th, it's sitting on over 9 million views. To put this into perspective, this means in just the 17 days it's been out, the podcast has racked up more views than 403 out of 408 Impulsive episodes. And I'd say there's a chance it eventually reaches more views than Impulsive's most viewed episode ever. George has since released part two of the podcast, which is also doing really well. And his channel has grown by over 300,000 subscribers. This is obviously huge for him. And the cherry on the cake is the amount of praise he's been getting. Man, in the years I've watched your content, I've always been so impressed with the way you can navigate any conversation with any person. You're a great speaker. This was a brilliant example of that. Glad to see the show is doing so well. I remember when Logan Paul mocked George for starting his own podcast. Nothing is better than a good underdog story. Been following since episode one. So proud of you, George. The best career decision George made was leaving Impulsive. I'm so happy to see this podcast doing so well. Great conversation skills. Dude is seriously talented. The same week George released the tape podcast, Impulsive released a podcast which bombed. It was with a 13-year-old girl and the episode got just 140k views in its first 11 days. Viewership for Impulsive has been down as a whole and I couldn't help but notice how the tides have turned given it was just a few months ago that Logan was making fun of George's podcast viewership. What's more, the vibe between Logan and Mike has been really off recently and it turns out they're nowhere near as close as they used to be. Mike's really sad that you guys haven't been hanging out. <sighs> You're sad we aren't friends anymore? Yeah, I mean, I, I called manager Jeff about it the other day. I'm gonna be up front, bro. You, you don't talk, we don't talk anymore. This show was built around friendship. The, the vibe on this show, the demeanor of this show was built around our shared stories together and the friendship that we had. And now that we just haven't been seeing each other as much, it's, it's, I think that might be part of the issue. I think that might be part of the problem. When you consider all of this and the declining viewership Impulsive has had for a while now, George getting out when he did seems like a pretty good decision. Now, of course, the success of one interview isn't enough to say George is now big time, especially since a lot of his other podcasts struggle to break 100K. 
But this is just the first season of his show and he's already managed to get some incredible guests. So who knows what the future holds? If we take a look at where he was at the start of this year, being treated like a third wheel and disrespected by guests, being mocked for walking out on the Bobby Lee podcast and having heated arguments with his co-host and boss, I think we can all agree he's come a long way. He took a leap of faith in pursuing his own podcast and it's nice to see it working out for him. You can really see just how much happier he is now than his days on Impulsive. Right now, it's like, man, and I know this sounds crazy, but like, I, I'm in the most happiest place I've ever been in my life. It felt like before I was hanging on to God and I was like losing my grip. And now it's like God's holding on to me and it's impossible for me for me to leave. It's just like I'm here and I'm locked in and I'm confident about where I'm at. And now it's like, even if the devil took everything away from me, I would just have a smile on my face. Like you have nothing on me. I found my true happiness yeah. and my happiness is sitting in the presence of God and there will be nothing that could ever steal me away from him now. That's, that's truly how I feel.